If you've ever seen The Last of Us, you might be familiar with the idea of a fungus turning people into zombies. You might have thought that was all Hollywood, but today, I'm going to blow your mind. It actually happens. Well, not to people, but it's a common thing that happens to ants. So today, we're going to talk about how a fungus can actually create zombie ants. Let's start with an introduction so we're all on the same page. There are lots of fungi that can infect insects. Some kill the insect right away, but others can infect the insect and change their behavior. So today, we're going to talk about a fungus called Ophiocordyceps. This fungus infects an ant and releases chemicals that change the ant's behavior. The ant will leave the colony and find a high place to cling to. The fungus will then consume the ant. When the fungus grows out of the ant, it releases spores. And because the ant is in a high place, the wind can help spread the spores, which increases the chance it will infect other ants. The chemicals this fungus releases into the ant can also have impacts on normal behaviors, like walking. Ants start to have trouble walking when they get infected, just like zombies do in the movies. One of the chemicals this fungus releases is similar to a chemical we call aflatrem. It's a toxin that causes shaking and poor coordination. So, researchers wanted to know if this type of chemical was what caused ants to have trouble walking. They also wanted to know if it had an impact on the ants' genes. Just a quick reminder, the genes are segments of DNA that contain instructions for how an organism functions. So how did the researchers do all of this? Let's talk about the methods. The researchers started by injecting ants with aflatrem to see if it impacted their behavior. They had four different amounts of aflatrem and two controls. Aflatrem isn't soluble in water, so they had to dissolve it in acetone. And to make sure that any behaviors that they observed weren't from the acetone, they had one control where they just injected acetone in a saline solution into the ants. They also had another control where they injected just the saline solution. This made sure that the injection process itself wasn't causing any changes in behavior. The researchers recorded ant behavior for 30 minutes after the injections. They looked at resting, grooming, walking, climbing, biting, and staggering behaviors. Here's what those normal behaviors are supposed to look like. The researchers used a computer program to help measure their movement. After the behavioral analysis, the researchers then took samples of RNA from the saline control group and the group injected with the most aflatrem. Then, they sequenced genes from the RNA to see which were being used and how much they were being used. The researchers compared the genes that were affected by aflatrem with previous data about changes in genes when the ants were actually infected by the fungus. Let's talk about the results now. Here you can see the video of normal behaviors again. As the amount of aflatrem increased, the ants spent more time resting and moved more slowly. Here, you can see staggering behavior increased as the concentration of aflatrem increased. The aflatrem didn't seem to affect the total distance the ants traveled, though. Here's a video of several subcategories of staggering that the researchers saw when the ants were injected with aflatrem. The researchers also found that 261 genes changed in the ants that were injected with aflatrem. The genes controlled muscle contractions and signals between muscles and the brain. Some genes also controlled aspects of smell and communication. 113 of these genes were also changed when the fungus infected the ants. What does all this mean? Let's discuss. The results clearly show that chemicals play a role in how the fungus controls ant behavior. Behaviors that are modified will slow the ants down and keep them up in a high location. This ensures that the fungus is in the right spot to spread its spores. The chemicals can change the genes that are responsible for muscle control and movement. This explains why the ants staggered and had a hard time walking. It seems that aflatrem and the chemicals the fungus releases both target similar pathways for functions like walking. Let's hear from seven-year-old Eileen, who has a question about aflatrem. Can we use the chemical for the mosquitoes too? If we spray them, will they be so dizzy they won't be able to bite us? Thank you for your fantastic question. 
One of the reasons we study zombie ants is to figure out how we might be able to treat pests in our local community. While it would be a great idea to spray pests like mosquitoes with aflatrim, unfortunately, these chemicals can also have effects in humans. So while we might not be able to use aflatrim for mosquitoes, we hope that in the future we can find other chemicals that might be more safe for humans. Thanks, Will. Now for conclusions. Keep in mind that there could be a lot going on in animals that we can't see, even in tiny ants. When you're observing nature, small details might matter. So keep your senses tuned to the world around you, and you might be surprised at what you find. Hope you learned something today. Have a great one. Hey everyone, we're a small nonprofit and all of our resources are free. So if you like what you see, please subscribe and share.